Okay, so the technique again is that we're going to be looking at substitution to simplify. So this is... Uh, the first substitution we'd get is um, du's two dx's. So if I put a 2 here, then I need a, a half there. So I'd have 1 half the integral of root u du, um, or 1 half the integral of u to the 1 half du. Now, it's not to say that some of you might not be able to just find the antiderivative that we started with, but it's easier now that we've made the substitution just using power rule here. It's going to be 1 half u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. So let's see here. That's 1 half 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. And those 2's are out. So I'd have u to the 3 halves divided by 3 plus a constant. And in our terms, that was what u was. OK, so even though there's been some cases where you know, so far we haven't had to use substitution, if you're stuck and you think you can simplify it, it's another good way to help you see how you could get your answer by making it simpler. Now some of them, if you're going to make your substitution and try and make life simpler, um, some of them you look at like this and you kind of wonder, well, how on earth am I going to match partners here when, you know, there's, there's stuff missing. But this is a very simple piece, this just plain old x that's there. Um, when we have just that one piece like that, we can make two substitutions to simplify it. So I'll show you what it looks like and I'll see if you can try it again on the next one. So I'm going to take the worst of it out. I'm going to take this piece here. So I'm going to just get rid of this, let u be 2x minus 1. du dx is 2. So du is 2 dx's. That means I need to put a 2 here and balance it with a half there. So at this point, It got a little simpler, but I still have this glaring problem right here. I have this extra x, and it's two variables. Can we think of a bright way to solve our problem? Great. So x is equal to, I'm just going to take what I originally started with, u plus 1, and then divide it by 2. So I'm going to put this into the problem, 1 half u plus 1 over 2, root u. Now all my x's are gone, I only have the one integral. So I'll tidy this up a little bit, this uh, half, I'll put them together, it's a quarter u plus 1 root u du. And it doesn't look like it got any simpler. But the thing is, now I can distribute this. I can do this multiplication. And then I have a very simple integrand. But where I started, I couldn't do that. Up here, those two were stuck together. It would be very difficult for you to see how that antiderivative would come out. So if I do that and distribute, I'd have 1 quarter. Um, that's 1 half plus 1. This will be u to the 3 halves. And then u to the 1 half du. So now I just have a power rule problem to solve. So this will be 1 quarter um, u to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves plus u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. And a constant. OK, so dividing is the same as flipping and multiplying. So I'll tidy those up. That'll be 2 fifths u to the 5 halves and 2 thirds u to the 3 halves.
so I guess where we'll leave off here, that'll be u to the 5 halves out of 10, and u to the 3 halves divided by 6, where we started with this thing here. u is 2x minus 1. So if you look at where we just left off here, if you look at where we finished, um, I honestly would not know how to tell you that you could predict that just by looking at where you started unless you substituted to try and simplify it. So how might you predict that you were trying to do that kind of simplification? Well, again, the problem with where we started is I can't distribute this anymore. So if I made this into a single variable, then I could distribute that one-half exponent out and then use power rule. So generally, as I said, if you can't solve it, fortunately for you, this course has one real go-to technique. If you're looking at that integral, you don't know what to do, your first thought should be, what substitution can I make? Your next thought should be, okay, what can I pull out of this to try and make it look simpler? And hopefully that would lead you to 2x minus 1. If you got rid of all that, it would simplify this problem. So the next one's very similar. It's not going to work unless you think about substitution. Think about what you'd like to simplify in it and see if you can work through um, this one here. Okay, so I'll try and catch up to you. If you're still working on it, you know, you don't need to come up and see what I'm going to go to. So for me, the first, uh, first thing I'm going to do when I make my substitution is I'll have 2x plus 1, and I'll have root u du. And if this is what I made my substitution for, I also know that x is equal to u minus 4. So I can call this the integral of 2u minus 4 plus 1, root u. And that gets me to 2u minus 7 over root u du. So we're at 2u over root u minus 7 over root u. And now I'll simplify it into power rule. Okay, so that'll bring me to 5 halves. So dividing by 5 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 fifths. So I'll have 4 fifths u to the 5 over 2. And then if I go up 1, I'll be at 1 half. So this will be um, dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2. So 14u to the 1 half and some constant. Yeah. Uh, second line. Okay, right here, the second line. Yes. Yeah. One, the third thing. One, two, three, yeah. Two, two, two over two. What is oh, it should just be one half, right? It should just be one half, thank you. So that means this will be um, Divide by 3 halves, so that bottom number should be a 3, not a 5. And same thing here. Thank you. Okay, so that gets me 4 thirds, and my substitution was x plus 4 to the 3 halves, minus 14 x plus 4 to the 1 half, plus a constant. Okay, so the, um, again, other than what we practiced earlier, that might be the, the other time substitution is handy to you when you can't quite see how to find the integral 
and you don't necessarily have a match, but substitution could make it a simpler case. All right. Are there questions about that last one? Okay. So the last thing we need to talk about is there's no, this is not an additional like technique. It's just what do you do if you now have a, a definite integral? So what if we were using this to find area? How does that affect things when we make a substitution? Now you'll notice that what we did was we solved these, all these integrals and we put it back in its original form. That could be your strategy. You do a definite integral, you go back to the original form in terms of x, and then you could use the bounds in terms of x. But I'll show you how to make life easier for yourself. And that's how do we change it in terms of u. So let's just work through one of these here. First of all, we're just going to ignore that. Well, not all of it. We're going to ignore this part of it. Let's just pretend that that's not there. And let's see what we come up with. So somebody, what would I do for a substitution on this? x squared plus 1, OK? So du dx is 2x's. du is 2x dx. So I'll put a 2 there and a 1 half there. So I'll have 1 half the integral of 2x. Oh, sorry. We're substituting that part of it out, um, of u cubed du. So this would be ideally what we substitute and what we find our indefinite or sorry our definite integral for because this is the simplest form. That's why we did it. So how would we figure out in terms of u what those bounds should be? That's exactly what we're going to do is plug them in. So if the bound was 0 that's in terms of x. That means the lower bound is going to be 0 squared plus 1 because that's how they are related. The upper bound is 1. When it's x, that means it's going to be 1 squared plus 1, which is 2, when it's in terms of u. So the lower bound becomes a 1. The upper bound becomes a 2. These two integrals are now equivalent. So you can just keep working through your problem in the simpler form. That means I'm going to have 1 half u to the 4 over 4 evaluated at 1 and 2. That's 1 over 16 u to the 4 at 1 and 2. So this will be, sorry, which one is, oh yeah, that should be a, yeah, okay, fine, you got me, you got me. Uh, so then if I substitute it in, that'll be 1 over 8. So 2 to the 4, that's 16. And 1 to the 4 is just 1. So that'll be uh, 15. So again... There's nothing to stop you from putting it back in terms of x and using the original bounds, other than the fact to say, are you crazy? Why would you want to do the extra work? Um, it's generally simpler if you just change the bounds, because that was the whole point of substituting in the first place, was to make a simpler expression. OK, so you're up. Make a substitution here and change your bounds.
Um, don't need a constant on this one because it's a definite integral. It's just going to be evaluated from 1 to 9. Okay, so fractional exponents, uh, I like to do the root first and then the exponent because that means I work with smaller numbers. So when I put it in at 9, it's going to be um, root, the root is 3 and then cubed is 27. So it would be 27 over 6 um, plus 3 over 2. And then I'll subtract it. Um, 1 is fairly boring, I suppose. It's just going to be those. Okay, and that means I'm going to have 26 out of 6. Um, those are out. And then 2 out of 2. And those are out. So that leaves me with 13 plus 1. So anybody get 14? Maybe? Okay. Um, oh, no, that's a 6. Sorry. I thought that was a 2. Yeah, they're my bad. 26 out of 6. I don't know if I can simplify that any more than to divide by 2. So let's just say 13 out of 3 plus 1, uh, which is 3 out of 3. So why don't I? So sorry, it should have been 16 over 3. Evidently, the coffee is wearing off as we go on. Okay. Uh, looking at the way I've structured these examples, that one probably should have been last. Uh, that one's fairly challenging. That's about the worst of the worst that you'd end up doing. So don't let that defeat you. These two should be a little simpler in terms of what you substitute and, and how you solve. So uh, take a look at these here. See if you can work through those. This, it should be a more of a standard, straightforward substitution you're doing. Okay, so I'm, I'm hoping that in this one it is a little easier to recognize the, the pairs. Uh, negative x squared over 2 is a good function, and that matches up nicely to the derivative we have. All I'm missing is a negative here, and I'll balance it out. So that means uh, when I do my substitution, it'll be e to the u du, and the bounds, uh, let's see here, my lower bound is going to be negative 0 squared over 2, which is just 0. My upper bound is going to be negative root 2 squared over 2. So that's going to be negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So 0 to negative 1. Now don't worry about the fact that it used to be from 0 to, like, now it's going to the left. That's okay. We did the right, we did the right adjustment. That's okay the way it turned out. If you don't like it, you can quickly make a switch. All you have to do is make it negative. So this would become the integral from negative 1 to 0, e to the u, du. Um, by switching those two bounds, I'd multiply by a negative. You don't have to do that step, but again, if you don't like going to the left, then switch it. OK, so this is one of our favorite uh, derivatives and antiderivatives, because it's just going to be e to the u at negative 1 and 0. That's going to be e to the 0 minus e to the negative 1. So that's going to be 1 minus 1 over e. And we can leave it there. You might also see it written as e minus 1 over e, which is just a common denominator made and fraction pushed together. Okay, so that one, I, again, is more typical. The, the, the one we did previous was like, uh, you were already on the summit. <laughs> now we're still climbing. So uh, one last question there. Maybe we should walk through it together just because we are getting close to time here. Um, so don't worry about the bounds at this point. 
what would you pick as your function? What would you pick as your derivative? Yeah, sine 2x is the function. I'll do it in a different color just because it's getting cluttered. And that means my derivative is going to be, careful about this, it'll be 2 cosine 2x because of the chain rule. So that means du is 2 cosine 2x dx. So what I'm missing in here is a 2, which means I'll have to put a half in front. So now I have the integral, the 1 half in front of u squared du. And I have to change my bounds. So my lower bound, um, this is where I'm looking to find my lower bound. It's going to be sine of 2 times 0. So sine of 0. It's just, you just can't get away from it. It's, uh, those exact values are haunting us all year long. Upper bound is going to be the sine of 2 times pi over 4. That's also known as the sine of pi over 2. So what would that be? Yeah. So my bounds now go from 0 to 1. From 0 to 1. And if you look where we started and where we're at, it's so much easier to deal with. That's the whole point of doing the substitution and why we changed the bounds, is now we don't have any more trig functions. We can just solve it as it is. So I'm going to have 1 half u cubed over 3 evaluated at 0 and 1. So that's like 1 sixth u cubed evaluated at 0 and 1. I always like taking the fraction out so that I don't have to, to work with, if it's possible, it's nice to take it out. That way I don't have to deal with fractions in my calculations. 1 minus 0 is here. So 1 sixth would be the area under that curve from 0 to pi over 2. So uh, this is our go-to technique. Please go and review our, uh, our notes here if you need to, but it's not going away anytime soon.